How many of you have money in a bank? None of you have money in a bank. <laughs> Do you store physical money in a safe deposit box? Maybe then you could say you have money in the bank. Oh, a few people say that. The rest of you have loaned your money to a bank. And for the privilege of loaning your money to the bank, you will be paid the amazing interest sum of 0.00001% per year. And your bank will take that money, turn around, and loan it to the people standing next to you for 24.99% APR. This is a client-server relationship, because that money only exists as a form of debt in a ledger that you do not control. A ledger that is stored by a server, and you are simply a client. In fact, you have no control over that at all. You don't even have basic interfaces to that money, unless that interface is mediated by the server. That's what a client-server architecture does. We have another term in distributed systems that describes a particular form of client-server architecture where the secondary party only has a copy, a weak copy that isn't really meaningful. We call that a master-slave architecture. And if you think of the previous iteration of money as a master-slave architecture, you have to ask an uncomfortable question. Who is the slave? Because in a system of debt, one of the two parties is always the slave. You are the client. You are not the server. And the server doesn't really serve you. They serve themselves, because they are the master. And that is the architecture of money we live in. That is the architecture of money we use in our civilization. An architecture of money where you have no control. An architecture of money where every interaction is mediated by a third party. A third party that has absolute control over that money.